Hey guys, David here and welcome to this video. Today we're gonna take an in-depth look at the JG Aurora Magic. So first of all, I wanna thank Banggood for sending over this printer. You can check it out at the link below. But all the opinions in this video, of course, will be all my own and totally objective. So when this printer arrives at your home, it is flat back, packed in a box, which means you do have to do some assembly, but it is quite straightforward. Depending on how much experience you have, it's going to take between like half an hour or at most two hours. There is a printed colored sheet of instructions included in English and Chinese. And on the SD card, there are also a lot of other languages like German and so on. The translations are sometimes a bit rough, but if you don't know any English or whatever, there still are instructions for you there. I don't know why you will be watching this video though if you don't know any English. That would make, not make sense. The build quality then is really nice with this really solid metal base. Uh, that's very nice to see. That this, I first thought it might be plastic, but it is not plastic, it is metal. So, so that, that goes the entire length of the printer and it encloses all the electronics inside. So uh, in contrast to most other uh, cheap 3D printers, there are no exposed power supplies or anything like that. So that is really nice to see and great for beginners as well. So you don't have to worry about any of that. Instead of the regular V-slot extrusion for the Y-axis, we actually have some eight mm steel rods here with bearings uh, where the Y-axis goes on. And since they're nicely spaced apart, uh, that actually gives a, the whole base a lot of rigidity, uh, which is, in my opinion, a lot superior to quite a few other cheap printers. The X-axis and the Z-axis is then basically the same with just the standard uh, aluminium extrusion and a uh, lead screw in the back. That is not a bad thing though, this is a proven system that works quite well and the extruder and hot end is also basically the same as we see in so many other printers. It's Bowen style with a single gear that drives the filament in. The hot end looks to be compatible with the now very popular uh, hot ends that you get with Creality printers. So you will also find a lot of compatible hot ends available from third parties if you want to change your hot end for whatever reason. Another thing that I really like about this printer as well is that they have kind of engineered a little bit more than most uh, manufacturers. For example, there's this little PCB up here that just unifies the X homing switch the heating and the fan and all that unifies it into one single connector where you only have to plug in one cable for all the things at a hot end. We see that all around these little PCBs that just make the electronics installation even easier. So in total you have to maybe plug in five connectors and that's all. And while we're taking a look around the printer, there is also a filament runout sensor here, which is very appreciated, especially at this price level. Uh, that's so that's such a simple thing to add. You just need an extra switch, uh, but it can really save you. And I found that if I have a filament runout sensor, I'm much more likely to use a spool, which I think will have enough, but I'm maybe not quite sure. On a different printer, I wouldn't use it if I print overnight, since I really don't want to run out of filament like in the last few layers. But with a sensor like that, it just stops the print, waits for you to insert new filament, and you're golden. There's also a really nice feature on the electronics side, uh, which aside from just power recover, which we can see on many printers nowadays, where if you have power outage, uh, it can recover. It can also recover if you take out the SD card accidentally. And you can just put it back in and resume the print. Works perfectly fine. And printing is what you're gonna do on this beautiful bed here. It's very similar to others. Uh, it has like a very substantial aluminum plate here with a removable kind of build tag like uh, surface. This is pretty much exactly the same as on the Ender 3 and many other printers, which is a good thing though. It is very, very powerful. You actually have to be careful that the print don't stick too well. Uh, you can see some residue from where I had the nozzle quite close to the printer and it was almost not able to uh, get the print off of there. But if you're ever in a pinch, you can just remove the platform with the four clips, bend it and any print will come off quite easily. 
Not everything is rainbows and unicorns though with this printer. One area that I have not really done a lot of uh, improvements is noise. This printer is quite loud. All the fans and electronics and for the hard cooling and uh, extruder cooling, they're all quite loud. Also the steppers are quite noisy. They don't use any dynamic drivers or anything like that. So if you want a quiet printer, this is probably not the one to get. A lot of these things can be improved uh, by yourself, uh, maybe adding some dynamic drivers, but all those are modifications that you don't really want to do uh, on a cheap printer if you can help it. But I guess as long as it's not in your bedroom, but instead somewhere out in the garage, it doesn't matter all that much. There are also no uh, up-to-date print profiles for this printer. Uh, the ones on the SD cards are for a really old version of Cura and so, but it's not that bad in this case since this machine is so similar to the Ender 3. I actually just use my Ender 3 configuration of Cura, uh, which is standard built-in into Cura when it worked perfectly fine. And then when we take a look at the print quality of this, uh, it is quite decent. It is basically on par with uh, what you expect from a printer in this price range. There is some stringing uh, that I haven't tried all the tricks that in the book uh, to get rid of it, but it's not all that bad. Uh, but it is certainly noticeable. There also is some issue that I'm pretty sure that it is probably just this specific printer where uh, on, on some layers I have a little bit of under extrusion. Uh, it might have also been something with my filament, but I haven't had this issue on any of the other printers. But it doesn't seem like something that's a design problem, but more something that is just on this uh, specific uh, one. Other than that, uh, on my profiles I did have to increase the extrusion multiplier just a little bit, just like one or two percent, since it was tending towards uh, under extrusion a little bit. But that's a very easy fix and after that it extruded perfectly fine. One thing that is very good in terms of print quality is ringing. And I'm pretty sure that is thanks to the hefty metal base and the nicely sturdy uh, print platform that I basically couldn't see any ringing whatsoever on the prints. Which is quite nice to see as that is a nasty artifact to get rid of and will probably force you to dial down your speeds a lot if you have it. But I couldn't detect any ringing on this printer, which is great. One little annoying thing uh, while printing, especially in the beginning, was that the included SD card had some kind of weird issue where when I try to print from the SD card, no matter if I sliced it myself or if I used a pre-sliced chicken from it, it just would start it, start heat up everything and then basically crash the controller and restart. But as soon as I used a different SD card, it worked perfectly fine. I don't know what the issue is there, but SD cards are so cheap that I didn't worry about it too much. So all in all, it is is a really nice 3D printer. At or around 200 bucks, it is the same or a little bit more than the Ender 3, depending on which one of the two uh, is on sale more. But I think for the extra features you get, you get the filament runout sensor and you get the more sturdy base with all the electronics nicely enclosed. Uh, that, in my opinion, is worth it over the Ender 3. But one thing that it still has, that the Ender 3 has, is this just crappy, Marlin controller. I know many people love Marlin, but I had the chance to work with a touchscreen, uh, cheap touchscreen printer, and that's going to be a review that's coming up probably next week. And it just is so much nicer to work with a touchscreen than with the clicky wheel. Just to move around the different axes uh, instead of by hand uh, through the controller, you have to select the axis. Then you have to go into that submenu. Then you have to select how far. Then you have to click into that submenu, and then you can turn the wheel uh, to move in that axis. And then if you want to move the other axis, you have to go out of that submenu. You have to go out of the next submenu, out of that one. Then you can go into the next one, and it's just so clunky and annoying to use. But that is something that's not specifically on this printer. That's on many printers. And if you just want to press start and not worry about any of the other features inside of the control of the printer, it's not an issue either. 
So that's it from me for this video. If you liked it, please leave a like down below and also make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. I'm gonna do a video on what you can see back here, the Alpha Visa U30, uh, which is very similar to this printer, but has some other different features like that touchscreen that I mentioned for a very similar price. And I'm also gonna make a comparison video between the JG Aurora Magic, the Alpha Visa U30 and the Creality Enter 3 coming up in the next coming weeks. So make sure you stay tuned. In the meantime, you can also check out the link down below for Banggood and also my social media is linked down below where I share stuff a little bit sooner and other fun stuff. So thanks for watching and until next time.